I'm going to show you the setup that lets non-technical people think PMs, designers, stakeholders push code in their company repo. No developer background needed. Just AI tools like Cursor, Claude Code, and Figma MCP. Then we're shipping. Let me show you how cool this is. First up, Cursor. What is it? Cursor is an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. It's a software application that applies all the core tools a developer needs, like writing, testing, and debugging code in one place. Why Cursor? because it's the best AI IDE out there today. And it integrates directly into your company's GitHub repo. So you can push updates to the actual code base. Now let's actually get access to your company repo. If you don't have a GitHub create an account, then you need to ask your dev team to add you as a collaborator to the company repo. So here's mine. I'm going to go in and go into the repository that I've been invited to. Here it is, the one that I want to use. Here it is. Now let's open in cursor. I'm going to copy this. See, saved clone. Say clone repo. Paste that link, enter. Now I need to save it somewhere. I have a folder called coding. I'm gonna create a new folder for this project. Let's call it YouTube. And I'm gonna click select a repository destination. Yeah. Open. Okay, so here is the project all of the files, all of the documents. Also, you see here on the right, this is the Cursor AI chat. This is great, a lot of people use it. I'm going to show you how to install Claude code that's going to be the one that you're gonna be chatting with. This is the terminal. What is a terminal? It basically lets you talk to your computer directly. Think of it as typing commands versus clicking buttons like we do in a product. And I'm gonna show you an example of how it works. Let's install Claude code. First, make sure you download the Claude Code desktop app. We're actually going to open another type of terminal. The reason why is because see, this terminal is connected directly to this repository, but I wanna to talk to my computer, not the code that I'm working on. So I'm going to open iTerm here. This is talking directly to my computer. I'm gonna paste this. See, it's setting up Claude Code. Now that it's installed on my computer, I can go back and I can use it in cursor. So here's settings. I can click Claude code here. There we go, it's open. I'm gonna close these other windows. I'm gonna close this terminal. Perfect, now I just have Claude code and my project here. Now let's set up the Figma MCP. First, what is an MCP? It's basically a universal connector that lets AI access your apps and your data without copying and pasting everything. I don't know if you've ever used Figma before where you had to download a PNG, then you had to upload it. Well, now it's gonna take all of the information directly from a link instead of you having to do that process as an example. But there are many MCPs out there that do many different things. I'm gonna show you how to install the Figma MCP. Here are the instructions for Claude Code. You're going to go in and you're going to send this command. So now we're gonna install Figma MCP. It's going to ask a lot of questions to you and you are going to need to respond. There's a pop-up here. I can say yes and don't ask again, but you'll see throughout this process that it's just gonna make sure that it's gathering all the information it needs and asking when necessary to get access to certain things. Successfully added, great. So now actually, let's go to Figma. I'm gonna show you how to see if the Figma MCP is set up. Look at it there, perfect. So this basically means I haven't tested this link yet and it's saying it estimates this is how many tokens it will cost. So now let's talk about creating a separate branch to work in. When we installed this repo, all here you see that we are using the main branch. The main branch is basically where your full product lives. Any changes you make to the code here, it will be applied to the actual product that's live. Working on a branch is kind of like having a sandbox. You can break things, experiment, iterate, and it's not gonna actually touch the main product. So there's two ways. Your dev team might not wanna give you access to this main branch like I have, or I suggest if they give you main access, you create your own branch. So how to create your own branch. See here, I'm in the main. I can click on it. It's gonna pop up here, create a new branch. I'm gonna call this new branch YouTube. And then I'm going to prompt Claude. Perfect, look, we are now working off of the YouTube branch. This way, you're working in a separate branch, but I'll show you in a little bit how to commit and how to create a pull request so that 
your code, once it's approved, can be pushed to the main branch. Okay, now we're going to set up our project so that it is making sure that any code it writes is exactly the right language, format, styling that the product has already been using. So to do that is we are going to ask Claude Code to read the .readme file. What is a .readme file? It's like an instruction manual for your code base. Your project will always have a readme if your devs have been organized and are creating the product in a way that anyone could pick it up. That's the most likely use case scenario. It basically tells you what the project is, how to install it, how to run it, any special rules or setup it needs. Okay, let's go open a new window. And I'm going to use this prompt. Read the readme file and add existing code and style guides. Giving it instructions. One, read it. Two, analyze it. Three, check for dependencies. Four, look at two to three existing components to understand the code style. And five, match the pattern already established. So it's basically delivering the tech stack the styling libraries, data visualizations, it's styling approach that I asked for. TypeScript is what it's using. This code base follows a modern well-organized structure. Perfect. Now let's start your local server. What is a local server? It basically runs your product, website, whatever you're working on directly on your computer. It's not live. So you can make changes and you can actually see the changes that you've made only on your computer. Okay, let's start the local server in the background. Perfect, it's up and running. Okay, so now I want to take this design and build it out. Prompting is an art of its own. I wanna make a separate video about it. For right now, I'm just gonna go very basic and we're gonna see what it comes up with. I'm gonna say design this Figma selection perfectly, pull the token styles, layouts, fonts, see on file. It should be called dash YouTube. That's where I'll place it and let's, see what it comes up with. So what's really cool is it's actually pulling this context. So all of those details I showed you, the fonts, the tokens, the styles, you can pull it directly from the link. So it's creating this to-do list, which I love, and it's walking through each of these steps. Yes, it's going to write a TSX page, which is basically taking all of this information, the whole layout of the pages and components and putting it into its own file. So it's basically creating a file that's going to explain all of the design tokens and everything so that when I build additional pages on top of it, it's going to reference all of this information. Everything looks the same, which is super cool. Now, let's see what it looks like. There it is. Look, the page. It should mimic Figma. It looks pretty accurate. So that is awesome. It's probably not clickable. Oh, it is. Look, it has these clickable states. Amazing. I don't want to get into too much detail here. What I want to show you is how to actually commit the code and push it to the repo. Let's see. Back in here, I'm going to go to this. This is basically all of the changes that I've made. I am going to have it generate a commit message. Let's talk about what commit means first. Think of it as saving. Now pretty much every product is auto-saved. But think of this as old school when you had to save all of your files. Basically, every time you do something, like you make a great design change or you finish a token or you build a page like we just did, you want to commit the change so that it's saved. So it's going to go ahead and write everything that we just did. And I'm going to click commit. See here, it's now committing this. Now we can keep do that, doing that until we have the perfect design page, whatever, until we're actually ready to submit a pull request. What is a pull request? When you are done and you're ready for someone to review your code. Now we can go back into GitHub. We go into our YouTube, we see there's two commits behind. Let's click here. Now we want to create a pull request. Here, I wanna give it a title. So we can say YouTube page. Also, you should be pretty descriptive for the developer that's going to be reviewing this. What changed? I created a new form for the YouTube channel because we needed new YouTubers to see the page. This is obviously <laughs> very rough. Screenshots, if you have a before and after, we didn't have an after, but we can definitely put a screenshot of what the page looks like. And then also local server. 
let's set this here so they can access it if they connect their local server. Now we're going to create pull request. That means that it is going to go into the developer queue where someone is going to have to review it and they can come back and say, these changes need to be made or they can make the changes themselves. And when they're ready, then they can push it and then it'll actually change on the entire product when they decide it's ready. So that's it. Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Subscribe below.